Hello friends, I'm Kayla. I'm so excited for this vlog. Today I'm going to be reading four books that people have said are similar to my favorite movies. These lists can be found everywhere. I've seen them on Instagram, I've seen them on TikTok, I've seen them on YouTube. Read this book if you like this movie. And I was just waiting for the right combination of things to make this video. I've been planning it since the beginning of the year. It was inspired by my local indie bookstore posting a question on their stories asking for our favorite movies and they would recommend a book. My two absolute favorite movies of all time are Donnie Darko and Almost Famous and I do not want to read a book like Almost Famous. I know all of the books out there that are like Almost Famous but Donnie Darko I'm always looking for recommendations for and so what I got from them was House of Leaves which is one of my all-time favorite books so fantastic recommendation. Based on that suggestion I trusted them. I submitted a second one. This one is in my like top 20 favorite movies of all time and it's about time and what I got as a recommendation before it was even released was The Seven Year Slip. There are not a lot of romantic movies in my favorite movies of all time list. This is a movie about time travel. A lot of my favorite movies have to do with time travel. There is a guy, he falls in love, he has to meet up with this woman in different situations in different timelines. The Seven Year Slip, I believe this woman moves into an apartment and she meets a man in there from a different time. My second recommendation comes from Instagram. I was filming a different video months ago and I had to scroll through my Instagram saved folder to see, to find a book to read. While I was there, I was reading this post that was book recommendation based on your favorite A24 movie. So based on these options, uh, mine would be Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. So I should read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which I gave five stars, and The Family Game, which I have on my TBR. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is not my favorite A24 film, but from that post, that one was my favorite. I highly enjoyed it. Um, and I would say it's in my top, like, I don't know, 30 favorite movies of all time. And I was surprised by the recommendation for The Family Game because I've seen this suggested for fans of whatever this one is called. I watched this recently. I liked it, Ready or Not. But with In My Dreams I Hold a Knife being on there as well, which I do love and gave five stars, I thought, let me choose this. It's also my book club pick of the month and I need to read it for the live show in a couple days. And then since that moment, I have been waiting for the perfect recommendation to fulfill a vlog, to get a third or a fourth book. And I've been watching all of these videos. I'm gonna put this playlist down below because there are fantastic recommendations from people. Some of my favorite movies, I've already read the book. Some of my favorite books were linked to movies I've never seen. Then I came across this channel, Super Blomper, and immediately subscribed because all of her recommendations were so spot on, so many of my favorites. So I had to take two from her. Mother. So this is a 2017 film written and directed by Darren Aronofsky. A couple's relationship is tested when uninvited guests arrive at their home, disrupting their tranquil existence. So this idea of losing control over what should be a safe space, your home. For this, I have chosen an Eric LaRocca book called We Can Never Leave This Place. Mother is a movie that I thought was so interesting. It was so hard to watch. And I can think of multiple books that I would say I would recommend for fans of Mother. And since Eric Laroca is already an author that I love. I figured let me take the opportunity to read this. Uh, it's super short though, so I took another recommendation. Nightcrawler. And this was written and directed by Dan Gilroy. So this is about our main character named Louis Bloom, who is a con man, definitely doing like below the board type work. And he's able to muscle into the world of LA crime journalism. And he realizes that the more violence he is able to capture, the more successful he is. The idea the idea of getting so sucked into your work, which features exposure to a lot of violence, and examining how that impacts and changes a person. Uh, so that's very similar to the book We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bervoots. And this was translated by Emma Rolt. Nightcrawler is a super interesting movie. It's one of those that ended up on my favorites list without any rewatches. Again, it's probably in the top 20 or 30. I have just as hard a time choosing favorite movies as favorite books, so don't expect a concise list in this video. But all the things that Super Blomper was saying in their video about Nightcrawler is exactly what I want from a book. And I've vaguely heard of this. It's called We Had to Remove This Post. I guess you just heard it from her. But this is another short one that I'm just excited to get into. I've got a variety of things now to get through. I'm excited to read them all. And if you have any recommendations you think I would enjoy based on my favorite movies, this is not definitive but here's just a couple of them. Don't judge me on any of them. I would love to get your thoughts in the comments below and maybe I could build an another TBR or two or three 
next year. Now let's begin with the book that I absolutely have to read before the week is over. The first thing we must do is change the calendar from October to November. I can't believe how fast October went by. I was actually planning on filming this entire video in the month of October and then just didn't get to it. Let's see what November has to give us though. Okay, pears. I kind of look like this. Now, when you compare a book to Bodies, 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 I think the first thing I would expect is that it all takes place in one area for the entire movie, like the house that they enter. And I expect it to follow like a group of friends or acquaintances and scary things happening in the house and it being rooted in reality. So this is a thriller with a fun, twist in it. And so I also expect the ending and based on my history with Katherine Stedman, I read Into the Water earlier this year, I'd give it a 4.5. I expect there to be some kind of reveal at the end that changes how I interpreted things throughout the movie or the book. So I actually already started this this morning. I'm a third of the way in and it hasn't been either of those things that I expected. Not that I thought that's what the book was about, but compared to this, it doesn't all take place in one area, though I think it could later on. And it doesn't follow a group of friends. It is a husband and wife. Her name is Harriet and she's an author and she has a husband named Edward and they have this super wealthy family and she's going to spend time with them, meet them, get to know them, uh, uh, in and out of the holiday season. And every time they get together, they play these little games. Some of them scare the shit out of Harriet, but there's also in between moments where she's investigating some questions she has about the family and then gets back into the manor and has to deal with them all. Right now, I actually would say that it's reminding me, though it's not supernatural or weird, of The Fall of the House of Usher, the miniseries, not the book. Mike Flanagan is one of my favorite directors of all time. And I think next time I definitely need to find some recommendations based off of his things. But we've just got this family and they all seem involved in the business, like keeping little secrets. Their number one priority is the family and there have been different deaths and there's different people around in the family who are like part of the business, but not in the family who remind me of certain characters who are very protective of the business in the family. And Harriet is just, really over her head here. So I'm gonna read on and I'll let you know how it's going later. Oh, oh great. Yeah, that's what I look like right now? No, that's perfect. There's been like four times ever that I've started recording before flipping out the viewfinder. And every time I'm equally shocked at how I look. Perfect. Let me know if you can hear my dehumidifier. I got a dehumidifier because this room is damp and cold and it's fixed everything but also maybe it's too loud. Let me unplug it and show you how much water it's collected. That can't be normal. Come on. <laughs> I was playing NHL, he's not yelling at me. Don't worry, man's never raised his voice in his life. Okay, two thirds of the way in, I'm hooked. I haven't been this enamored by a mystery in a good couple months. Catherine Stedman just really excellently crafts a mystery and I'll try to explain it. For one, she constantly has countdowns which make it really engaging. So there's like, we have, I have this many days until I have to go to this holiday thing. I have one more day until I'm gonna tell the family this. And so I have to decide this or I have to find this thing out in the next 24 hours. And it's like constantly you're on edge waiting for an event. And then also it's only like five seconds between you thinking of something and the main character thinking of something. And that's very satisfying because you get the moment to be like, oh, this person looks suspicious because of this thing. And then the main character is like, wait a minute, is he suspicious? I actually need to read the synopsis to know what I can and cannot spoil for you. Have I even told you what the mystery is? Probably not. Okay, Edward's father, Robert, my husband's name, hands Harriet a tape of a book he's been working on. So she's an author, he's just this rich successful man and he's like, I want you to listen to this tape of my book and she listens to the recording and it's not exactly as she expects. Oh, it says it right here. But as she presses play, it's clear that this isn't just a novel, it's a confession. A confession to a grisly crime. Feeling isolated and confused, Harriet must work out if this is part of a plan to test her loyalty or something far darker. I think some of the things that Harriet comes up with and goes digging into like don't make a lot of sense but also she's not a detective she's just kind of grasping at straws trying to figure out what this crime means if it really happened like what this tape means i do have a theory about the tapes and i'll talk about it in the live show because this is spoiler free obviously i think i've now made it to like the big final event that the family is together for and another game is kind of kicking off but the games are so interesting because they are kind of sinister feeling for Harriet and she's being 
indoctrinated into this family and she is like the fresh meat of it all so they don't really tell her everything but that's like in their mind a fun part of the game but to her feels really dark and then when she brings it up to anybody they're like whoa you're taking things too seriously the fact that i already really like it is just so exciting because i know that there's a twist element i'll film myself reading the last like 20 pages maybe and hopefully we get a reaction on camera looking like this this whole book thinking it could be five stars yeah is it five stars definitely not I am so bothered <laughs> that um certain things didn't play out the twist obviously um I saw coming the only thing that I really predicted about this turned out to be true which like is a bummer but I was entertained the entire time and as soon as that happened I was like surely there's like a real twist like an oh my god like bodies 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 twist but then there wasn't there wasn't something that I was waiting for like that was it and then I constantly have this complaint about books that are about games is the games don't take up the whole book and they don't go far enough and blah 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 so this whole time I was thinking, great, we've had multiple games having a great time. And then this final game, especially once we understood what it was and got little like conversations during it, I was like, oh my God, this is so juicy. I can't even take it. But then it didn't like fully end, which makes sense for like the story, but I want the game to finish. I don't even know, honestly. This is a really hard one to rate because I always say I need to be entertained and surprised. I was one, I was not the other. I could easily talk myself into a three because there were so many things in here that got thrown in here, like different characters, different conversations. And it was just like one or two times and then that person never came back or that idea never came back. And it just didn't feel like, a. it felt like the second last draft. Like we're almost there. But my favorite mystery thriller books have layered twists and reveals. Anyway, I think now I'm gonna go ahead and rewatch About Time. I know when it came out, I watched it like three times within maybe two years and then I haven't watched it since. So that was 10 years ago, wow. Okay, so I did watch About Time last night and it was just as good as I remember. And now I've gotten a third of the way into the seven year slip and I'm doing some reading stories with my channel members today where I'm gonna continue. And I'm just really excited to see if this one was just recommended because of the time travel element or if it's gonna have some things that were really enjoyable in the movie, like kind of present in the book. So something that's already been similar is in the movie, basically you have this guy and later in life, I don't remember how old he was, but in his late teens maybe, um, he realized his father taught him told him that all the men in the family can time travel and taught him how and taught him the rules. And so from then on, he goes on with that knowledge and makes decisions in his life of when he wants to go back a couple minutes and fix little mistakes. And what that main character has in common with ours is that they're both pretty quick and probably just for like the entertainment sake of the piece of media, pretty quick to accept what has happened and how their life is altered now. They're just going along with it and just accepting it all. So basically we have Clementine and she has, uh, she works in the book industry, which also the love interest, the woman in About Time also has a bookish career. She reads for a living. But in here, her aunt has recently died and left her her apartment. And when she goes in there, her aunt has always said like, 
something about like the apartment relit like every seven years something magical happens in the apartment and she went in and the number one rule her aunt always told her was never fall in love in the apartment so she opens the door one day and there is a man there and she quickly realizes he's from seven years ago they build this relationship rather quickly but it feels pretty like nice and organic and then when she leaves the apartment and comes back sometimes he's there sometimes he's not but i'm trying to figure out at this point is like why on earth clementine is not trying to find this man in her actual timeline because it's only in the apartment where she is visited where she's visiting seven years in the past when she leaves she's in the real world again and they have this little romance and she obviously is starting to have feelings for him but i just want to know like why she's not seeking him out in the real world because he would only be seven years older. Like, would you not be so curious about where he's at? Another thing that's similar between the two is the idea that the person who's time traveling knows the information and the other person doesn't and they're keeping it from them. Um, so it's kind of like a almost manipulative situation in the character who knows about the time travel has to navigate that if they should tell them if they should open up um in the movie that really wasn't as much of a plot point as i thought it would be and it didn't really have a huge morality lesson because while things went wrong for the guy and he used his time travel in maybe the wrong situations it wasn't this big blow up there was never this like fight between the romantic couple where she found out you know that you the kind of storyline you would expect where there's this moment of betrayal that didn't really happen um it was a much more sentimental story and it was about him and his family and the romance was authentic between the two even though he could time travel and go back and change certain like impressions she had of him their original moment of connection was always genuine so i do wonder if it's going to come up in here like that moment of betrayal like if some point this guy in the apartment's going to realize what timeline he's in or what timeline she's in and get mad about it. I think much like the movie, the intent is going to be about like learning and appreciating what you have, like living in the moment. And right now I'm liking it and I'm gonna continue on. Okay, it's like eight hours later. I'm just getting back into this. I have this much, this much to read. If you were wondering, uh, Reese's peanut butter pumpkins are the best. Reese's peanut butter flavor, shape, and make for a good bookmark. I once was using a flosser as a bookmark. <laughs> and I didn't think that anybody would notice. And then I got one comment that was like, is that? Actually, I think they were making fun of me because I like have a bookmark business and don't use bookmarks as I should. They're just a little too far away and the peanut butter pumpkin admittedly was right next to me. What I'll say about this is I love it. <laughs> I love it. I wanted to be a five star so bad, but it's also like at times a little bit cheesy. The humor is like a little bit off for me um, and it's a little too... I feel like self-aware and so much about publishing and so like obviously the author knows about publishing because she writes books and the character does and it's clearly like serving a certain type of romantic interest to the reader that just like I can't enjoy their romance as much as I want because I'm being distracted by her using like the exact phrases that are just so like known to be what the romance girlies are looking for. Even the first chapter, honestly, like it's a good thing I didn't check in with you really early in the book because I would have said it was a little too much. Um, it felt very rom-com. She was basically talking about a guy she was dating and when they broke up, she he was like telling her all of her flaws in the breakup. He said, you're so closed off. You use work as a shield. I don't think I ever really knew you. You won't open up. You won't be vulnerable. What happened to that girl in those photos with watercolor under her fingernails? And it's just like so much for page 10 to be just like 
throwing it at me. This is all of the girl's flaws. This is what she needs to work on. And you should root for her being the girl who loves watercolor under her fingernails by the end of the book. And yeah, it is this self journey for her. And she needs to learn things about herself and her balance of work and life and romance and whatever, but too heavy handed. What I will say is like movie TV comparison stuff, just because that's where my mind is right now in this whole video. Yes, about time for sure. But I also think if you like the bear, which like I obsessed with season one, just got renewed for season three, I will be watching even though season two was not my favorite. And I would not say at all that this is like the bear. But I think if you like the bear, then this and all of the kitchen stuff and the yes chef and the high end restaurants and all the food descriptions, I think it could really work for you. And everything I was saying earlier about how, like why is she not looking for him in the real world and wanting to be with him in her actual timeline? Everything like makes sense. And I actually really like the journey that we're on and all the things that I was worried about, um, they're not gonna happen. As far as the about time comparison again, because like that's what I'm here to do, I think that it is spot on for like family stuff too. It's not too much about like her aunt and things, but it's definitely a piece of the story. And there's obviously death and grieving happening. And there's like that important sentimental portion of the book. I'm just really excited to see how this last 40 pages goes, but I'm staying pretty optimistic that this is going to be one of my favorite romances of the year. In the live show, I was like, like, I remember giggling. There have been moments that it's not too explicit, um, but I was like blushing. I was feeling like, oh my God. So we'll see how it all wraps up. My friends, we were so close to finding a five-star romance this year, but alas, it still evades me. This is on par with the other uh, 4.5s I've given this year from Talia Hibbert and um, Bolu Babalola's collection. And then I also gave Happy Place like a 4.25. I think if it had 50 more pages, as much as like, obviously it could have dragged things out and not always the longer the romance, the better. However, the things that it spent time on, like her family relationships, her job, her friendships, I liked all of those things. And so I wouldn't want to replace those with romance. So I needed another 50 pages of the romance because if we're going to have a cutesy scene between them and then three scenes and three chapters of her doing totally other things, it needs to come back to a romantic scene quicker or a better one because I just didn't get enough of them, enough of them as a couple, enough of their personalities. It felt a little bit basic, but I still like loved them together and I just, I needed it to be a little stronger. It was cute and it was sweet and it was lacking conflict and it was right up my alley. Absolutely perfect recommendation for the movie and I'll see you tomorrow with the next one. Good morning. Is this a jump scare? I feel like I look a little bit frightening, but also it's kind of stunning. <laughs> um, it's pouring rain. It's cold. I'm here while Liam does hockey practice at 6 a.m. I brought myself a blanket, but it's actually not as cold as I thought. And I figured normally we read scary books at night, but it's dark right now. So like, why not just read a hundred page frightening novel while I sit here alone in a dark parking lot. What could go wrong? Now, just to be clear, I feel like I have two different types of favorite movie lists. Ones that I look at and go, oh my god, I love that. I want to rewatch that. Woohoo. <laughs> the second list is ones that honestly, sometimes I don't even know if I like halfway through the movie, but it's like, got a good ending or a good twist or it makes me think afterwards that then I consider it a favorite. And there was just something about Mother. I would never rewatch it. I don't think I would actually want to read a book in length that was like as exhausting to get through as Mother, but the vibes of it in a novella feels like exactly what I love with my reading. So we're just gonna do it. You might be able to see, I was gonna say the sun rise behind me, but I don't know because the rain is making her appearance instead. The sun has come out 
and the birds are awake. I'm halfway through the book and I don't really know what's going on. We're following a main character named Mara and her father recently died and her and her mother seem to really hate each other. Um, they're like trying to connect but then they get in a fight immediately. Seems very toxic. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's like people coming to the door to give their condolences, but they're like weird. Are they people? Are they creatures? I don't know yet if I'm liking it, but I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. I don't have coherent thoughts to share. It was short, it was weird. It didn't get as like, oh my God, big reveal, like strange twist that I might've hoped, but it was odd. Okay, hello. It's a couple days later. Um, we are hosting a hockey tournament this weekend and I just went to a game this morning and Rob and Liam are still at the arena. Rob is a tournament marshal and then I have to go back to a game. But in between, I have a live show for the family game that I need to mentally prepare for. And then we go live in like 10 minutes um, and then back for another game. The game I just came from, incredible. Um, it was only 2-1. Yesterday we had a complete shutout, which um, outside of the tournament, this is our third shutout in a row, which is crazy. Today though, Liam got one of those two goals. <laughs> So I've been thinking about this and how to describe it and how to rate it. I'm gonna land on a three. It is my least favorite standalone of Eric Larocco's. Let me grab the other one. Strike that. I do not have time to find them. My battery is about to die. I have to, another reason I have to come home between the games is to charge my camera battery because I film all of the games for the team. So five stars, five stars, three stars. Although it's a short story collection. And then this one is also three stars. I know that this will not appeal, like this probably has the most mass appeal of the three that I've read that are just standalone short stories. But there was something about this one, the way they constructed this experience um, that just really did it for me. A specific like trope within it that I know won't land for everybody. I saw somebody say that Eric LaRocca writes trauma horror and I completely agree with that. I think this one, though a lot of them just feel kind of surreal and pointless and just weird for the sake of being weird. Um, I did want this to have more of a takeaway kind of message at the end. It's basically in this kind of dystopian bleak future that's a little unclear because of this isolated setting. Um, and that makes it as unsettling as Mother. And I really think that this was the perfect pairing because the being in your house and having it infiltrated and just feeling like you're unsure of what's going on, that mental kind of representation feels accurate between the two. There was a lot of trauma, there was toxic relationships. Um, and then of course it's like this bigger metaphor for things beyond the human consciousness, I guess. He just has such an interesting way to weave a sentence and I appreciated the writing even though I didn't love the plot. And that's not super surprising knowing exactly what this is because it could be described partially as like a creature horror and that's not always my favorite type of horror. Oh, I just noticed Paul Tremblay has a blurb on the back. An author whose blurbs I can normally trust, didn't dislike it at all, would recommend probably more often than the other two. Now, before I get into this one, um, I do have to do my live show, but I also, I feel like I had something I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, this doesn't fit into this vlog at all, but I will have no other opportunity to talk about this. Um, but everyone on this train is a suspect, I think is what it's called, got a cover. And if you don't watch all of my content, 
um, and especially my cover related videos, then you won't know why this matters. But recently I did a cover prediction for this book and it turned out the cover was completely different um, because it didn't follow the typical like idea of the original cover, which was like the blue with all of the elements. And so I created an orangey, was it orange? Did I do orange? I might've done purple, but talked about how I think it should be orange. Anyway, I did a cover based on it having a sequel and I put all the train elements in it. And then when the actual cover got revealed, I was like, okay, I was way wrong. And now I actually really love this cover. It turns out there are different editions for this book. And now there are like three covers for this book. And the one that was just revealed, oh my God, looks not just like the one that I made, but there is one that's in line with like the train tracks and everything. And I just wanted to put it out there because people have been messaging it to me. And I just made a TikTok also. The only reason I saw it was because I was making a TikTok of all the pre-orders pre -orders that I've made so far this year. And I went to screenshot it and the cover was actually there. And I was shaken to my core. Was there anything else I wanted to update you on? Oh, I have a little book haul. These three things just arrived in the mail. So I thought I would show you. I ordered Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson because I just love the cover. And I don't think it's at my library. I have no idea when I'm gonna read this but I own it now. And then I got the Christmas guest in the mail because I decided that I'm gonna do a video to kick off my like 10 to 12 days of la 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 or lalamus or whatever we're calling it. And I'm gonna do a vlog where I read just a couple holiday short stories or mysteries. I'm having a hard time finding diversity in this space, specifically novellas that are mystery or thriller um, by varied authors. I know Janice Hallett has one. I've seen a couple others around, but I wanna make sure I'm covering a variety of authors. Um, this anthology seemed interesting because Stephen Graham Jones is in it and I'll pick up anything with his name. Also Tanana Reef Dew and a whole bunch of horror authors that I've actually read. Some I've loved, some I haven't. And it's called Christmas and Other Horrors, a winter solstice anthology. So I'm gonna read this and this, and then I think I ordered a couple things from Waterstones for the first time. So who knows when they'll get here, but I'm sure before the week of Christmas, so I can also integrate those. But if you have any other ideas for short things that I could read, I would love your recommendations down below. Now, finally, I am reading We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bervotes, translated by Emma Ralt. Rob has never seen Nightcrawler, and so I think I might make him watch that with me tonight or tomorrow, whenever we find time. Um, but I don't think that it would matter if I rewatch it at all. Like, obviously, I would be able to compare them closely, but I don't believe that they are close at all in regards to plot. It's just the feeling that it gives you and um, the witnessing of violence and what it does to a psyche. Final day of the tournament. Final day of this vlog. Uh, I'm reading, we had to remove this post. Oh man, hello. Rob's currently in the arena doing the time clock for the game. And then Liam has his game. Last night was not a good one. Now they're not in first place in the tournament anymore, but the game and the team that they played at 8.45 last night, they're playing again at 8.45 this morning. And at least that team, they like traveled 14 hours to get here and they're the ones who are probably gonna win the tournament. So at least it's like worth it for them. But the game ended at 10.5, so. It was a time. Um, honestly, first chapter, 10 out of 10. If I was doing my first chapter of every book on my TBR shelf, this would be pretty at the top of my list. It just introduced this like interview type idea where we're reading from the perspective of somebody who works for this company who moderates posts, which is something not to the extreme, but as a teenager is something that I did on like a social media website. I was a photo moderator and it had to get like approval. Your pro It's so weird to think that like social media, you couldn't post a photo without it being approved first. So your profile picture had to go through like multiple moderators and you can move up in the ranks of moderatorness and the better you were and the more accurate you were and if like you had no other moderators questioning your things you had to get like three people to approve it you would move up and then you could just approve things on your own at one point and that was like a huge achievement for me when I was like 16. So what this girl Kaylee is up to is she is moderating posts and photos and there's a list of rules and you have to like assign the right rule to the photo so if you see something come through a video 
whatever you have to say if it has like sexual content if it has like violence and then it can be like well you maybe see this video and you know that there was violence that took place before it but technically it's not on camera there's just like a dead I don't know animal in the video so do you approve that or do you not because what about memorial posts and like there's all of these like steps that you have to go through and the first chapter opened with her basically going everyone wants to know what I saw what was the worst thing I ever saw that's the first question that I get and I guess there's this lawsuit and she is talking to a lawyer and talking about how she's going to explain the whole story and what happened while she worked for this company and it was just extremely intriguing and now I have run through a good chunk of it it's pretty widely spaced even for it being a novella so it's a fast read I don't think it's going to get weird at all in the way that the book I'm about to compare it to does but right now it's giving me the vibes maybe just the writing style um, of Fina and then also several people are typing but maybe it's just because their workplace um, things just from one person's perspective I guess that was two books I was comparing it to I would also say like maybe if you like severance you could like this but now it's getting more into just this relationship that our main character is in with another woman who works at the company I wouldn't say it's a weird book it's just a little odd and seemingly pointless I don't think it's gonna go in a weird direction but like I want it to so I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finish it the novella is complete this is something I would really hesitate to recommend to people because one, it has a really low Goodreads average rating, um, but because two, I think that this is going to be really underwhelming for people who went into it expecting like a thriller or a horror. So I'm glad that I knew what it was because I've never seen this on any lists of like the best horror or really uncomfortable creepy horror I thought it was just more general fiction and the number one thing I would actually recommend this alongside is Big Swiss because it has like weird character dynamics it makes you feel uncomfortable and the whole thing feels really pointless and just like Big Swiss I'm giving it a 3.75 I had an interesting time with it you are following Kaylee as she navigates she doesn't even it's so hard to explain. It's not her navigating like the trauma of what she's seen. It's just navigating relationships at the same time as her doing this job and how to speak about it to other people. It's very stream of conscious. It's a writing style I really enjoy. There is no big climax. It just kind of ends. And I understand why that would be unsatisfying for people. I would also recommend this alongside, interestingly, Eric LaRocca. So similar things to his books when you think about um, what you consider salacious or gratuitous. And it's just cool that I got introduced to a creator who like likes both and getting in tune with somebody else's taste is really interesting. As far as being compared to Nightcrawler, like I'm gonna make a, a broader conversation about this in a second about all of these books, but I would say this is not the same plot at all because that's not how it was pitched to me and that's not what I'm looking for anyway. Um, but I would say a couple things that they have in common is a cynical worldview, whether that's for the audience or for the main character to be um, grappling with. And then also beyond what I was saying before about witnessing violence and what it does to you as the reader and as the viewer, it's interesting watching a character get introduced to you and coming to understand who they are and then having your opinions of them change throughout the story as you come to understand them through other people's eyes. This is effective in a lot of ways and I'm glad that I read it. Overall this is what I'm looking for with these recommendations and I'm glad that even though I didn't love all of these it gave me what I wanted as far as when I say I want a book like Donnie Darko, I don't just want the screenplay of Donnie Darko to read. I don't want it to have to do with this time travel and countdown and giant bunny. Like that's not what I'm talking about. I just want the feelings that I get. And there are people out there who are so good at making these connections and I wish that I was one of them. Because when I think more about the comparison of bodies, 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 on the surface, it does not make sense as a recommendation. Also, there was no information alongside this for me to take away what the creator 
was meaning by the recommendation. But if I were to sit here and analyze it, I would say something about the idea of it following a big group of people and a main character figuring out who they can trust, what makes a person a good person, and um, what secrets should be secrets and what you can share with others and how to navigate relationships in a tense environment. Then this one was the most spot on as far as feeling the seven year slip. And by feeling what I mostly mean is the tone of the overall story and how deep it gets or how romantic it gets. And then these ones make me think to myself, if I had read this independently outside of the recommendation, would I have then afterwards thought, oh, that reminded me a bit of Mother? I think yes. So this is a fun experiment for me overall. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you with another vlog very soon. Bye.